Maybe you need knowledge to acquire a luxury car, but if you are acquiring with your knowledge a Bentley, I mean, sorry, that's a fail. What does it take to be a man, be a man, be a man, be a man? For those who are joining us, I'm William. I'm a researcher in sociology at the University of Warwick in the UK. Got my PhD in 2016 and recently got 300,000 pounds as a grant to work on my own research project around Muslim lived experiences in Europe and North America. I'm the author of Young Muslim Changemakers, a book about how Muslims use their faith to improve society. And I'm also a filmmaker which has produced dramas and documentaries which have been acquired uh, commercially by TV channels and streaming services. In my job, I'm usually paid to review these kind of retreat programs, team bonding trips, what we call social cohesion in the business world, which are about people building trust with each other and becoming better teams. People usually pay a lot to get their stuff reviewed, we say audited, but today is just a first impressions video. Top. What does it take to be a man? Focus principles, sincerity, strength, honesty, knowledge. Well, I think it's a good start. It's not an exhaustive list, but I think it's a good set of values to start working on. Start out in a state of ignorance. Then we reach a stage where it's time for boys to become men. In the human society and in the animal kingdom, adulthood is characterized by, first of all, independence from the parental household, autonomy, the ability to survive by themselves, and third, the ability to start a family. So when I see that, I expect this retreat will be about how to develop your skills so you can be autonomous, independent, and ready for marriage and starting family, raising kids maybe. To excel, live up to the title. We are ambassadors of the great men that came before us, the Badder Club, dealing with mental and physical health, relationships, finances, and most importantly, faith. Our beautiful Dean, a place for men only. It's time to grow. Learn how to become the best possible man you can be. Allah gave victory to the companions at Badr when they were weak. Now Allah can give you victory at the Badr club when times are peak. For indeed, Allah did secure you at Badr when you were utterly weak. Remain then conscious of Allah so you might have cause to be grateful the Badder Club. Sign up now and become a member. Become a man. <laughs> Their marketing strategy is a really good attempt, I think. The script tone is great. Uh, it's like an action movie trailer. Um, it's well filmed, well edited. Uh, some ready-made transitions are a bit cheesy, but yeah, I don't think it damages the video for their target audience. We're not reviewing a Terence Malick movie here. I hear buzzwords, I see visual stimuli, action scenes. So what I see is that I think it's going to be a great experience. If they're selling a holiday package with all of these activities, well, that's brilliant. A few details. Why is this guy wearing trainers while riding a horse in the desert? Why doesn't he wear boots or sandals? Because, I mean, the sand's gonna get stuck in the trainers. So in this scene, they chose a Bentley. Bentleys are such unreliable cars. By choosing a Bentley, they're basically saying that they have really poor standards. When I see someone driving a Bentley, well, I feel sorry for them. If they showed me, I don't know, it's a luxury car. So if they showed me, I don't know, a Lexus LS or a Lexus LC, well, why not? I would say these guys know their stuff. But a Bentley? So here, the guy who shoots the submachine gun has received little or no training on how to handle a SMG. He leans first his head like sideways. When you shoot, you make sure your head is straight. It's aligned with the gun. You don't lean your head over like this. And his body posture is straight up. So I know it's only a 9mm, so there is no much recall, but usually with these kind of weapons, you lean forward to counter the recoil of the gun. So I hope people who go on their retreats and go to shoot get better instruction. So when they talk about physical, mental health, relationships, finance and faith, well, I think it's a really good package when they say it, although maybe a bit incomplete. But, and this is concerning, there is a dissonance between what they say and the visuals they show. 
So I have a question. How does Dubai, jet skis, Victoria's Secret and driving a Bentley will help people transition from boys to men? Or can they be markers of adulthood? Are these supposed to be goals in life? I wouldn't be surprised if some of the viewers get cognitive dissonance because I think one mistake they make is telling their audience that to be a man of value you need to be rich and buy luxury items in one of the most jahil places on earth. Let's take their exact wording. How do luxury resorts, luxury cars, wealth relate to focus, principles, sincerity, strength, honesty and knowledge. I don't know, maybe they see a way they're related. Maybe you need knowledge to acquire a luxury car. But if you are acquiring with your knowledge a Bentley, I'm mean, sorry, that's a fail. Or if we talk about adulthood, how can these help people becoming independent, autonomous, or can even be the result of being autonomous or independent? At least the guy drives Bentley himself, which means he's got a driving license. So that's good. That's a good start. Second, it is very Western and modern concept of what life should be. When I'm talking, I'm talking about the images. If you travel to other parts of the world, and by experience this is something I've encountered in the French Guiana, and you hear similar things in some parts of Africa and Asia, a man of value is someone who can survive in their environment, in the desert, in the forest, in the mountains. Someone who can cut wood to build a house, build a boat, um, or just you know, how, knows how to hunt or to raise animals, grow plants or forage plants either. So myself, I drive cars on track. I have a motorsports license. I have a powerboat license. I practice shooting with firearms on a regular basis in many other sports. Well, I don't earn six figures, but I consider myself financially comfortable. I don't have two wives, but I've been married twice and I've been in many relationships before. So I don't have anything to prove or to envy and all what they offer in that program. These are things I already practice regularly in the UK. But these are not what made me improve my character. What helped me develop my character was not all these experiences or even any coaching or any retreat, uh, any talks about religion. It was mainly very difficult life-changing events such as migrating to a foreign country without money, uh, surviving five years of abusive marriage and the subsequent depression and suicidal thoughts surviving isolation in a country where a majority of Muslims rejected me for being Polish, uh, becoming jobless and homeless in a country where I didn't have any friends or family, uh, falling out of friendship and mending these friendships, uh, facing the rejection from my family and mending the relations I have with my family, or if we really want to talk about sports, is things like hiking for several days in full autonomy in the mountains with people, because it's much more difficult than alone, and several times. But for me, I'm at a point in my life where being alive, just the simple fact of being alive is success. I was, I'm not supposed to be alive. I should have died in 2015. I talk about this in some other videos. But when you have lost everything twice, you become very much satisfied with the little. Through what I've experienced and what I've seen with other people, and I talk about this in my book, Young Muslim Changemakers, developing your character is a very, very long process. The most brilliant Muslims, or even just the very most brilliant people I've ever met in my life, are all people who have been through very difficult life experiences like losing someone, becoming seriously ill, becoming a single parent, uh, living in poverty, becoming homeless and many other hardships. And if you want to become a better person, it's not just about going through these experiences, it's about overcoming them and processing them. These experiences break people. And this is why we see in the world people who when they don't process things, they end up hurting other people in return. And also in my life, it was meeting as many people as possible and even people with conflicting ideas. For example, I've met Muslims who are pro-prevent and CVE, uh, 
Muslims who are against Palestine or Muslims who support Nike uh, producing garments through uh, Uyghur forced labor. So when you meet people who have opposing or views to yours, you are able to develop your way of thinking and in question things, you know, think cr critically. And also meeting elders, very important, meet the elders because they have much more life experience by definition than ours. So in, in this Badr club, you can learn for 313 pounds how to make six figures for example so i don't know who is behind that uh, i'm so i'm only reviewing the program only retreats are at an extra cost and I, i've seen people reacting on, on social media and i think i agree what about uh, the, who whoever is unable to afford these uh, they will probably borrow and get in debt uh, or get their families in, in debt and that's a very like high risk. Let me tell you the story of the Muslim Entrepreneur Network, which is now a defunct organization. So this was an organization aiming at making people make six figures on the very short term by teaching them skills such as Amazon dropshipping uh, and the kind of advice which is freely available on the internet. Some of their leaders not all of them. Some of them got caught in Dubai and arrested for fraud. A lot of people gave them thousands and thousands of pounds hoping to get this recipe to six figures. Sadly, classic story, people didn't act on their promises and people lost lots of money, sometimes their life savings. So I went to one event as an observer and I got to talk to people participating in the scheme and it saddens me to say that you would see like like your average uncle like single moms single parents or young people who were all living in very f difficult financial situations people who are just vulnerable and who can blame them i know people may think that they're stupid for investing such a, a huge amounts of money in that scheme but look if you're living in poverty you have a tunnel vision, you're just focused on getting out of there, surviving and getting out of there as soon as possible. And when you have people with like holding meetings in a mosque and using all these religious vocabulary, of course people think they are, they are trustable. While I've learned the hard way, it's not always the case, but just think of how people in this vulnerable situation uh, would think when they see something like that. So I'm not saying the Badr Club is a scam, it's like the Muslim Entrepreneur Network, but I just pray that it doesn't end up like the Muslim Entrepreneur Network. So on their website, they advertise Operation Six Figures, Operation Second Wife. But my question is, guys, where is patience, commitment, critical thinking, resilience? Why is there not, no challenges, no, men no things about mental strength? nothing about character. So I really wish these guys well and I assume their intentions are pure and I really want to see Muslims we can be proud of but why using a definition of not only a man but a Muslim man based around materialism? This is I want to understand because I think their offer works really great as a holiday club. I wouldn't go to them if I really wanted to work on my character. If you really want to improve your mental strength with sports, you can do it with jet skiing, but why not going jet skiing in the Solent in the UK in winter? Yeah, this is going to be mental strength. So, of course, you will have people in the reviews, genuine reviews, saying that uh, it was such a great experience, uh, they have greatly benefited from it, it has opened their eyes on so many things and allowed themselves to know themselves better. But I think it's misleading to think that a holiday club will improve one's character and make them better people just out of a sudden. Because, in my experience, n no, it's not only the Badr Club, but no amount of money no course, no retreat will provide that. You need a lifetime and a lot of practice by yourself to become a better person. You can get advice, fair enough, but the work has to be done by yourself. So these retreats can give people new ideas or a new vocabulary. 
And before anyone embarks, then I would suggest people ask the Battery Club, do you have any qualified experts on board? I'm not talking about coaches or religious scholars. For example, they talk about mental health. Do they have qualified clinical psychologists in, on their retreats? So if they're driving cars, uh, will there be at least experts who would tell people the difference between oversteer and understeer? If they shoot firearms, will there be people telling them like what is a good posture when you shoot or what is an MOA? When it comes to activities, lots of people who organize uh, driving or shooting sessions uh, for people to just, you know, have it like a tester are mainly good at running businesses rather than being experts in their discipline. If people go on jet skis, will there be lessons about how to swim or recover or re-enter when you, your jet ski capsizes? Because believe it or not, lots of people do not know how to swim. And if you're around water, it's a very important skill to have. So if there's faith and religion, will people be talking about how did the Prophet ﷺ deal with the people of Ta'if? Or what did the Prophet ﷺ do? when he met the people of Mecca when he came back. So if you offer activities, offer a package with Ihsan, with excellence. Otherwise, it's just like parachuting people on a climb to Mount Everest, but without training, without the appropriate gear, without equipment and without proper guidance. And believe it or not, it happened. There is a charity which happens to be Muslim who organized a trek in the Himalayas and they didn't think that people needed uh, altitude acclimatation before climbing. Result, two people ended up in hospital. So if I was to offer any kind of training, it would be for people first of all to know better the society so they don't fall into its traps and know better themselves. Like, what is your weaknesses, what are your interests, your strengths, and how do you work from there? And second, offer people tools to improve themselves for growth, tools for growth and resilience. How do you progress? How do you move forward? How do you better your character? How do you recover if you fall and get wounded in life? And only then we can talk about relationships, we can talk about finances, because remember, Relationships and wealth are tests in this life. And you would really like to be prepared and have the tools to deal with these tests. If you set on a hike, you need to prepare your body, you need to pick the right gear, and you need the right map and a compass, and then you need to train and train and train until you're ready. It's like, you know, people want power but without any control on their power or any guidance, any reference to so what I see on social media, and this is why I left Facebook and Instagram in November 2021, is because I don't see rich Muslims on Instagram. I see rich people who put their forehead on the floor and do not have any clue about what is a good character and they don't have even the best spending habits. So I've, it's like, you know, I've met people driving supercars and owning them, but they don't know how to, like, fix a light bulb or and they believe anything they hear on social media. So one thing I think modern Western men lack is being autonomous, being independent, physically, emotionally, intellectually, so which means being able to self-reflect and think critically, mental slavery, is a real thing. So yeah, if there was a package about uh, learning daily life skills and uh, good character traits, I would go for it 100%. I practice lots of different activities, I drive, I shoot and stuff, but the two tools I use the most are first of all my multi-tool, when there's things to fix around the house, and second, my patience. Out of all the tools I have in the activities I do, these are those I use or practice the most.